Good morning, everybody. And uh, welcome, welcome, honored keynote speakers, seminar presenters, stakeholders, partners, and sponsors of this conference. My name is Klaus Holm, and I'm the chairman for ASIM LL Hub, located in Denmark under the Danish School of Education, Aarhus University. And as a chairman, it is, of course, a great honor for me to welcome all of you. And all of you means more than 120 participants from more than 30 different countries across Europe and Asia uh, that has come to Copenhagen to be part of the ASEM Forum for Lifelong Learning 2016. Um, the title of the ASEM Forum 2016 is 21st Century Skills, and that means that this particular conference will, be, will deal with three main themes. First theme is about defining 21st century skills. And the question is, what are the skills needed for lifelong learning in Europe and Asia in the 21st century? This theme and this question uh, makes it important to deal explicitly with what it means for specific regions and states that the educational landscape to some extent is changing due to an increasingly globalized world. The second theme that we will, um, that we will give some concern at this conference is related to the question about drivers for change. Or let me be more specific. What drivers for change are creating uh, revolution, a revolution of the educational landscape in the 21st century. This team includes both issues about technological and social drivers. Currently, for example, we are witnessing the claim uh, that di digital technologies are creating a pedagogical revolution. But do we have evidence for that claim? is probably still a question. The third theme uh, is related to the question about learning cultures. Or again, to be more specific, how are 21st century skills uh, influenced by the differences between Asia and European learning cultures and also within European and Asian cultures? These are some of the questions that uh, we here, the researchers from Asia and Europe, will address at this conference. As I said, I have been looking very much forward to this conference, and this is also due to my understanding of our current situation. That is, that I think that we are part of a defining moment where we are challenged to become able to formulate, formulate new lifelong learn learning policies that makes people capable of dealing with rapid changes. I also hope that you are, all of you are as eager as I to get to listen to the researchers gathered here at DPU Aarhus University. So let me uh, end my welcome address with on the behalf of ASEM LL Hub, um, uh, to welcome you all, all delegates, and also let me give uh, special thanks to the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Danish Ministry uh, for Children, Education and Gender Equality, and the Asia Europe Foundation, which are the co-organizers and sponsors of this conference. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I would now uh, like to uh, give the podium for uh, opening speeches, three of them, uh, 
and starting out with an opening speech by the head of office from the Danish Ministry for Children, Education and Gender, Ms. Sine Thyssen Philip. Please take the floor. Good morning. Uh, dear ASM, lifelong learning hub members, distinguished guests, uh, ambassadors of ASM countries, speakers and participants, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege and an honor for me to open the ASM Forum for Lifelong Learning. And it's also a pleasure to welcome you all uh, to Denmark and our beautiful capital, Copenhagen. Labor markets have become increasingly dynamic and economies are increasingly globally integrated. Forecasting the competence needs of the labor market are uncertain, and the only thing we can rely on is change. Many, predominantly low-skilled, are at risk of losing their jobs, endangering the well-being of them, their families, and society at large. But we also see how many routine jobs, even high-end and with, with respect to the qualifications, are phased out and leaving a new type of educated workers behind. But by changes in production, trade, and logistics, Capitalizing new technologies and new modalities of work open new opportunities. In turn of the close down of traditional jobs, new opportunities occur. Redundant workers cannot be allocated to the new job slots without the skills and competencies in demand by the new labor market. It is important that initial education prepares children and young people to the life of an ever-changing world. They must have good foundation skills, but even as important, they must, trust, they must have trust in their own abilities, eagerness to acquire and use new skills, and to cooperate in and accommodate to socially and ethnic heterogeneous social settings. An efficient and dynamic lifelong system will be a precondition for a dynamic and competitive labor market with a socially sustainable profile and opportunities for all through life. So societies who realize this and respond by investing in efficient lifelong learning systems and invite business and industry to foster workplace learning will benefit hugely. Let me give you an example of the benefits of lifelong learning. A few years ago, a sugar factory in one of the Danish islands decided to automate the production and they would have let most of their workers go. A responsible management, responsible unions and dynamic local adult training centers joined together in due time to avoid disaster. Together, they provided individual training programs for the workers well in advance of the closing down of their jobs. By the end of the process, the unemployment rate in the area was unchanged. Even though it's not always possible to find ways for everybody, this is somehow a blueprint to renewal in the Danish labor market, and we must go further down that road. In this country, we build on a long-standing tradition for lifelong learning, and by large, we have many of the structures and procedures needed for an efficient lifelong learning system in place. I believe it's fair to say that many countries could learn from our experiences. But by the end of the day, relevance is the crucial criteria. This is where the big challenges lie. The programs must constantly be renewed in response to changes in the labor market. And those who make use of the programs, the learners, must feel that education opportunity is relevant to them. They must be motivated to take part in the ongoing learning. This does not only relate to unemployed. It would be far better to enroll people before they have lost their jobs. So our challenge is twofold. We must build capacities to cope the change, and we must build incentives to utilize the potentials. People, companies, and unions must engage in relevant pre-empty action in terms of setting up learning opportunities related to the implementation of new and innovative technologies in the companies. In order to do this, we need to know more. We know that people learn even though they're not in formal learning situations. And we know that there is a gap between the qualification in terms of certificates and what they can really do. Often their competencies are much stronger than their papers indicate. And often people struggle, even though they have basic skills issues that could be easily remedied. So we need to draw up a profile of real competences, of the real competences of the adult population in our nations. And we need to know more about how informal and non-formal learning works. We must look deeper into the potentials of work-based learning experiences. We must know what drives people in various cultural segments of the population to learning and how to avoid demotivation. I know that these topics are at the heart of your work and that you're going at the heart of what you're doing. And I will strongly encourage you to keep up the spirit and make an enhanced effort to bring the evidence that you produce to public knowledge. 
It is indeed important that this agenda is maintained in the ASM education process. And those of you who participate in the upcoming seniors' official meeting, I am particularly encouraged to stress this view in the process. We have noted that involving business and industry in education is on the agenda of the ASM education process. We have also noted that this can be understood as involving business and industry only in universities. From a Danish perspective, uh, this scope is far too narrow when it comes to strategic rethinking of, edu of what education can and should bring to our society. This is relevant to education at all levels. We have learned that the answer to many of our challenges is education, education, and more education. This might very well be true. Um, but we also need children of all ages to be independently thinking and innovative entrepreneurs, as well as dedicated learners. We need a far more dynamic interface between the, inter between the education system, the civil society, and the labor market, so that young people from an early age can experience themselves as members of value-adding community and alternate between work and learning. This is a way to take the notion of lifelong learning seriously. We must also be aware that other international settings for the international cooperation and education policies are active in the domain, and we should also take their achievements into account. First of all, we should not reinvent the wheel by repetition of what has already been done by others, and secondly, important inspiration might be gathered. The OECD has launched a skills strategy. It's a combination of existing data, analysis, and policy recommendations. We're eager to look deeper into this. Based on our experiences with OECD work, I assume that the paper will be a good point of departure also for your further studies. Like the well-known PSAP PIAC program for the International Assessment of Adult Competencies, it provides a rich source of data on the competence profile in the participating nations. Nations, regions, and clusters of nations sharing mutual interest in this matter will have access to the data and be able to undertake in-depth studies. I will strongly encourage the ASM LLL Hub to take note of these two major contributions and include them in your work. ASM, sorry, Denmark can take pride in being the first nation to take LLL to the agenda in the ASM context. It happened in 1999. I'd also like at this stage to note that under the ASM umbrella, it has been possible to set up extremely beneficial bilateral cooperation. Today, we have a well-established cooperation with Korea and Vietnam, and we are looking forward to taking this even further. In the ASM ME 6 in Seoul, Korea next year, we are particularly looking forward to the presentation of the outcome of the ongoing work of the ASM LLL Hub, as well as the contributions from the conference that we will open in a few minutes. I would like to express my gratitude to all who made this event possible. Our co-sponsors, the Asia Europe Foundation and the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Aarhus University and the chairmanship of the ASM LLL Hub that carried the heavy load of all the logistics. And not the least, all of you who made your, who made your long, long way across continents to be with us today. I wish you all a pleasant stay in Denmark and in Copenhagen. But first and foremost, I hope that you will enjoy the good spirit hard work and cooperation with the single-minded, dedicated and diligent colleagues. Good luck and thank you for your kind attention.